for 250 years, museums like Prado or Hermitage or Louvre or Uffizi or National Gallery, they have been collecting, organizing, and then giving back uh, masterworks to the communities. But what I have always been asking myself is, where are the people? Where are the people that since 250 years have been walking through the galleries of museums? Where, where is the recording of their emotions, of their con uh, emotional conditions, of, of their passions, of their, of their pain or joy in front of the works? So on, on one hand, museums have, have done an amazing work in organizing and protecting the, 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 the artworks. But there is no visual trace, documentation, of the presence of the human beings that for hundreds of years have been visiting museums. So the very meaning and the very core of, uh, of uh, Spectaculum Spectatoris is to build the first step of a uh, human atlas of the visitors of museums. Build the first step of a human atlas. A filming 480 people in Prado was uh, a possible way of uh, starting to archive uh, this presence, this sort of uh, uh, patrimonio dell'umanità in museums. Uh, I really wish that in 25, 25 years, uh, so when another generation has come, the Prado may, may involve another artist to repeat the operation and archive a second generation of humanity in this museum. So how will be people be dressing and what their gestures will, would be and what kind of, 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 of haircuts or jewels or dressings or behavings or attitudes will they have in front of, of, of these works? Most of these people they are just standing still without really smiling or talking or acting. And on the background, you can have an unfocused view of the masterpieces or the, uh, or, the, or the architecture of the Prado. Because what I really wanted was to focus uh, physically, technically, on the people. But on the other hand, I also asked them just one thing, to fix the camera and not to laugh. And this is, from my point of view, a sort of reminiscence of memory of the very beginning of the history of photography. When immigrants from Europe moved, for example, to, um, to Americas, and they were sending back to the families in the 18th century a photograph, like the only testimony, the only witnessing of their presence, that they were still alive, and they would have never have laughed in the picture because there was nothing to laugh about it. There is nothing to laugh in a photograph or in a, or in a long photograph, like in a one-minute film. It's the witnessing of your presence, of your standing still in an important environment. The exhibition is divided in two parts. One project is on the first floor and it's a five minute short film. And the second part of the exhibition, it's a video installation in the Galleria Honica. And both these projects, they talk about the relation in between Prado and uh, humanity, which is living day by day, visiting the masterpieces of the museum. The five minutes short film is the result of a one day voyage inside the museum with a very small film crew. And mainly the idea was to don't uh, pre-write anything, to have a sort of uh, emotional experience of the museum, uh, mainly focusing on the, relationship, on the system of relationships in between people in the museums and the artworks. Um, the short film is simply a daily diary of people behaving inside the museums, trying to collect the reactions that 
people, groups, communities, families, couples have in front of the masterworks. The video installation, which is called Spectaculum Spectatoris, it's uh, five uh, projections on inside ventanas, wall, uh, windows of, of, of the Galleria Conica, and it's a collection of uh, uh, a, little bit, a little bit less than 500 uh, portraits of visitors of Prado. Uh, it was filmed in June 2011, and uh, during seven days and three nights. The 483 persons that we uh, asked to be filmed for the video installation Spectaculum Spectatoris, they were all mostly uh, interested and curious about being part of this artwork. Uh, the reason why we, we wanted to film so many of them, and I wish I could have done more than this, it's because we really wanted to have a sort of uh, real parameter of the diversity of the humanity visiting museums nowadays. And, and so we didn't really choose the people. What happened is that we just installed the, the, the crew and the cameras and the lights in some spaces of the museums. And of course, this machinery was creating a curiosity and was somehow attracting people. And we just really helped them in. And so in a way, the, the people was self-selected also. And at the same time, I think that they are a, a good sample of all the variety of, of, of nationalities or ethnic group, religious group, uh, political group, and also social and economical differences in society. Uh, so th the whole installation is a very uh, disorganized bunch of humanity. What I think was very important is that all the people uh, before starting the filming was always asking us why we were doing this and what was this for and why do we thought that it was important to film them in a place where there are so many important masterworks. So I think it was very interesting because in a way it's like if they were starting to have a critical approach to contemporary art, making questions even before uh, taking part to the filming. I think that since we start to study as, as, as art students, we, are, we learned that uh, the concept of a modern museum was starting more or less 250 years ago with, with sample museums like the Musei Capitolini in Rome. And it, it was a very core moment for democracy advance because it's, it's been the very first time when people could freely access to culture, to art. So it's, I think, a very important step forward in European societies. I think this is basically one of the most important things which is happening nowadays in contemporary art. Because one thing is the, 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 the content, the, the, the core of the meaning of a project. On the other hand, there is the, the question for an artist. What do I do to reach the people? How do I, how do I work out my necessity of making my, my, my research accessible to people? How do I turn this research for knowledge visible for the communities? So the idea that uh, the exhibition is visible from outside, it's, it's a way to say that suddenly the Paseo del Prado at night is a prothesis of the museum. It's, it's like a new branch, a new arm new space, a new gallery of the museum. And from this point of view, it's, I think it's a very political statement. And I was very interested in the idea that Prado was also interested in this idea that not all of the art should be protected from the museum walls. The, the five minute short film, which is located on the first floor, at the same time will be shown in 400 cinemas around Spain. And the main idea about this sort of uh, trespassing the, the perimeter of the museum is the idea that nowadays contemporary art is acting sometimes like a parasite 
uh, in order to achieve other spaces and bring the museums outside the physical space of the museum. Of course, as far as the short film is a, an artwork and will be shown before the starting of everyday films in cinema, maybe the people will react asking themselves, what am I looking at? Which is exactly what I want to achieve, the idea of uh, displacing people, the idea of uh, misunderstanding, and the idea that sometimes it's, it's very important to look at something that we have not been informed before.